Hi, this is the third part of the series on developing a game console based on the ESP32. If you haven't yet, you might want to watch at least the first part on composite video to get the basics first. And in today's episode, we will add audio support to our system. The ESP32 has two ducks. We are already using one duck at 13.3 mega samples over I2S to generate a video signal. Since the ducks are tied to each other, they can only run at the same sampling rate. So the easiest way to generate audio on the second duck is to sample audio at the same rate as the video and send two channel data over I2S. But this takes much processing power, precious memory and drops the sampling rate to somehow jittery 10 mega samples killing the video quality. The 13.3 mega samples are only achieved when using the one channel option of the I2S driver. What happens there is that the internal FIFO receives only one sample and sends it to both channels. Sending data for both channels, the FIFO has to process twice the data. Just setting the deck value in the software doesn't work since it's overwritten by the FIFO in any mode. But I found a solution in a confusing part of the datasheet which is not covered by the I2S driver. There is a special mode which can be used to let the FIFO write a constant value to a specific channel. And this constant value can be changed by the software anytime at any rate. This is ideal for us since we can handle a much lower sampling rate of the audio using a timer function. I wrote a small audio system which handles sounds we like to play. It mixes all playing sounds and fills an audio buffer with the final samples. A very simple and short timer function is set up which reads a sample from the buffer and writes the constant value of the hardware FIFO. The timer frequency is set to the sampling rate of the audio system. The audio system handles the music loops and all the sounds with really low latencies. The audio buffer is refilled each main loop cycle. And this is how the audio is connected. Since one duck is already used for video, we only have one left for mono sound. To get the sound on both speakers of the TV set, we can simply use the same signal for both channels. Simply connecting the pin to the audio cable is sufficient in the most cases. But the signal we generate is a DC signal and the samples are shifted by half the range. Since audio is based on AC, we might want to remove the DC offset using a capacitor in series. The cap has the disadvantage that it filters low frequencies. Using higher capacities, more bass is preserved. 10 microfarads works for me. In most cases it won't matter if you don't use a capacitor, since the amplifiers will remove any DC offset anyways to prevent destroying the speakers. Having a constant DC offset on the speaker coil would simply create heat. I will do more videos on audio in the future, but this should be enough for now. To be able to convert audio files easily, I created a small tool that creates a wavetable from multiple audio files. When the resulting header is imported, the sounds can be easily played using the audio system. I also cleaned up the code of the Tetris clone and added support for sprite collections to make the code easier readable. The tools, example code and the Tetris clone can be found on the project page. Many of the viewers requested color video. I will give it a shot in the final episode of this series, wrap this up and then I will do more hardware related projects again. Hope you liked it so far and please subscribe and share this video. I also have a nice surprise in April you might not want to miss. See you next time, bye!